this tutorial I'd like to go through the automation modes. These are the automation modes that you get for every channel. And I just want to explain what they are. You'll see that you've got a whole bunch. Usually they start with read and then you've got off and you've got latch, touch and write. Read will always read any automation, any changes, animation that you've made. It won't allow you to make new animation, it'll just read what has happened. So if you have actually animated something, the read mode is the safe one because it won't allow you to do any more animation, it'll just watch what you've done. If you go to off, it will ignore any animation and just play it back at whatever level you have the slider set at. So read is safe and will play back any automation that you have created and off will ignore any automation. But read is default because when you make a change, and in fact what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset my workspace so you can see things a little bit more clearly here. I'm only going to work, although I've got two waveforms here, I'm actually only going to demonstrate this on one. Usually what you would have is your speech on one channel and your audio or your music on the other channel and what you might be doing is automating up and down the volume of the music as that you see the speech and work through the speech. But I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to demonstrate on one channel for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to shut down and turn off audio 1 and just increase audio 2 so that we can see it more clearly. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it from clip based to track based because tracks are linked to the sliders up here and if I pull this slider down you'll see that the line goes down and if I pull it up you'll see that that line goes up and they are linked if I double click it, it goes back to zero we're at zero so because the two are linked I want to see the track and as you can see this line goes beyond the clip because it's animation for the whole track now the first one I want to show you is the right one and the right option is the most dangerous why is it dangerous? Because wherever this particular slider is, as soon as you hit the space bar, it's going to start recording from that point. So if I started at minus 15 or minus 30 or even minus infinity, turning the sound off, it would start at that point and record and remember what you've done. And in fact, because of this, when you finish right and when you stop after your recording, you have a little option here in your panel menu which says switch to touch after right. And the reason it does that is touch will not start to record anything until you start to pull the slider around, whereas right will always remember where the slider is. So because it's dangerous, it doesn't even stay at right when you stop. I mean, so you put it on right, hit the space bar, make your changes, the animation happens. As soon as you hit the space bar again, it'll go to touch because it doesn't want to carry on writing. It thinks that perhaps you don't want that. But if you do want that, you can always turn that option off. So let me demonstrate this. I'll start at zero just for demonstration purposes. Hit the space bar, pull it down, pull it up slowly, pull it down, and it's just remembering everything that I do. Stop, and there are the keyframes. Notice there's quite a few of them, but quite a few keyframes leads to smoother production. Now, if there are too many keyframes for you, or you want even more keyframes, you change that in your audio preferences. So on Mac it's Premiere Pro preferences, on PC it's Edit Preferences Audio. And when you get to this audio panel you'll see at the bottom you've got something called Automation Keyframe Optimization which is on by default saying that the minimum distance between keyframes is 20 milliseconds. Otherwise it will create a keyframe pretty much at every single frame when you make a change which will give you loads of keyframes. But you might think that this is far too many keyframes, in which case you can click this one here, minimum time interval thinning, and you can change it. So if I change it to 200 milliseconds, 10 times greater, and I click OK and I do another right. So I need to go back to right, because bear in mind it's on touch at the moment, and say I want to start at minus 12, and I start playing, and going up, and going down, nice and smooth, and stop look how few keyframes are created. Now that looks very angular to me and angular means it's going to be a bit more bouncy and juttery and it's not going to be quite as smooth as having lots of keyframes so I wouldn't advise going up to 200 milliseconds but you can if you want to if you're worried about too many keyframes. Now I've done two recordings one here and one here so when I do control Z I'll only need to do it twice to get back to nothing 
So control or command Z, one, control or command Z, two, and I'm back at nothing. And notice again, touch has come back up, right has gone to touch, the automation mode. So right is dangerous, and it remembers exactly what you do, you know, regardless of where you start. Now that's the difference between right and latch. Latch will remember the place you start. Okay, so if you perhaps start at minus three, and that's the place you want your line to start at, your audio volume to be at from the beginning, if you use latch, it will always start when you do a new recording from minus three. Let me demonstrate. If I hit the space bar to record and pull it down to minus 12, it's going to stay there until I change it, go up to minus three or plus three there, then go back to minus three, stop, and you'll see that it's just remembered exactly what I want. But if I now go down to minus 12 thinking, or minus 15, I want to start there and hit the space bar, watch the little slider here, it instantly jumps back to minus three. It didn't start at minus whatever I did, and try that again, it's just gone straight back to where I started. It's latched back to the beginning. So it gives you the opportunity to set the default line or the default volume level for your whole clip. And then latch will always go back to that when you start a new recording. And bear in mind it's always on a new recording. It won't go back to this level if you carry on playing, only if you stop and start again. So I'm going to control Z a few times to get rid of that. Double click to take it back to zero. So that's latch. There is one other one which is touch, and actually this is the one that I use the most. Touch, like latch, will remember where you start. So if I start at minus three, because that's how I wanted it to work, it'll always go back to this figure, my starting figure. But what actually happens is when you pull the slider down, when it's recording, and let go of the slider, it will gently, over a predetermined period of time, go back to the starting position. So let me demonstrate that. So push the space bar to start, go down to minus 15 and let go, it goes back to minus 3, go down to minus 30, let go, goes back to minus 3, go up to plus 3 or plus 6 and let go, goes back to minus 3. And there are my keyframes, I haven't changed my preferences back actually, so let's go back to edit preferences, audio and take that back to 20 milliseconds. I'd end up with some better keyframes. But anyway, you get the idea. Touch is always going to gently go backwards and forwards to the areas. And in actual fact, I should have shown you while I was there. If I go to Edit Preferences again, or Premiere Pro Preferences Audio, at the moment, right at the top, it says Automation or Auto Match Time, one second. So if you want it to go back to its default point faster than a second, you just change it here. Or to take longer than a second, again, you can change it here. And the speed that this slider returns to its original position is determined by this setting just here. So those are the automation modes. Very quickly, if I go to off and I go back to the beginning, it's going to ignore everything that's gone on here. All the automation is ignored and it's just going to play it back at zero. Read will read any automation that has actually taken place and play it back without recording anything new. Latch allows you to decide a point where you're going to start at and then acts as if it's like right and you can make any changes you like but once you stop and you try and do further recording it'll always latch back to the original value. Touch will automatically allow the slider to go back when you let go of it and right is the dangerous one that'll just write anything that you like wherever you start. So if I wanted to start at minus 30 and I hit right here it'll write over everything that I've done at minus 30 so that when I push stop you'll see it's at minus 30 and then pops back to whatever was in the middle so that's just the starting point there I haven't actually recorded any animation from this point so right is the dangerous one but it always goes back to touch as long as this preference is selected